Here are random facts that will blow your mind. Number 1, there are 16 million thunderstorms occurring worldwide each year, which equates to nearly 2,000 thunderstorms at all times, according to the National Severe Storms Laboratory. The frequency of thunderstorms you encounter varies depending on geographical location. For instance, it is estimated that 100,000 thunderstorms occur in the United States per year. Number 2, in June 2020, a 22-meter high bronze sculpture by Belgian artist Thomas Leroy was installed in Nachheist, Duenbergen, Belgium. The title of the work is as straightforward as it is powerful, Tower. The tower is a metaphor for today's society, which is made up of many aspects that are more useful together than individually, a society in which we rely on one another. Listen to one another and find common ground. Number 3, in Rubik's Cube, there are over 43 quintillion different configurations possible with 6 colored sides, 21 pieces, and 54 outer surfaces. More than three decades after the cube was created, a team of mathematicians demonstrated using a Google supercomputer bank that it is possible to solve any cube within a maximum of 20 moves. Number 4, Silver Sword, which comes from the Argyroxithium sandwisen subspecies, is an endangered species that blooms only once in its life, just before it dies. According to the National Park Service, Silver Sword lives between 3 and 90 years or more. The blooming season lasts from June to November. The flower can grow up to 6 feet tall. This species is known as the crown jewel of the island of Hawaii. Aside from its magnificent natural beauty, the flower's message to the world is patience, hence its nickname, the flower of patience. Number 5, Nicole Oliveira, a Brazilian girl, has achieved remarkable success in the field of astronomy at the age of 8, earning her the title of the world's youngest astronomer. She's been fascinated by space since she was a child, raising her arms in the air to reach for the stars when she learned to walk. After taking part in a citizen science program organized by the International Astronomical Search Collaboration, in which NASA is a participating member, Oliveira was awarded a certificate of recognition for her impressive discovery of seven asteroids. She has also been given the opportunity to attend international seminars and meet influential figures in Brazil's space and science community. Number 6, Chrome updates its logo after 8 years. Chrome is changing its logo for the first time since 2014, and if you squint really hard, you might notice something different. From 2008 to 2022, the Chrome logo has become increasingly simplified. What began as a gleaming three-dimensional emblem has been reduced to a two-dimensional symbol of modernity. Number 7, on April 18, 1955, Albert Einstein passed away at Princeton Hospital in New Jersey. Following his death, Thomas Stoltz Harvey, the pathologist on duty, performed an autopsy to ascertain the exact cause of Einstein's demise, and it was determined to be an abdominal aortic aneurysm. That should have been the end of it. But for Einstein, the story doesn't just stop there. Intrigued by Einstein's genius, Harvey took the extreme step of removing and preserving Einstein's brain without the family's permission and bringing it to his laboratory at the University of Pennsylvania. There, he proceeded to divide it into at least 170 parts, while some source mentioned 240 parts and sliced in microscopic slivers, mounted on slides, and stained. This process took three months to complete. He stored a significant part for his own study into two jars within a cider box and distributed the remaining sets to renowned pathologists worldwide. Einstein had a clear wish to prevent his brain and body from being studied or revered. In Brian Burrell's book Postcards from the Brain Museum, it is mentioned that Einstein left specific instructions to have his remains cremated and the ashes scattered in secret, aiming to prevent any idolization. So, less than 24 hours after Einstein's passing, his family and close friends had a secret ceremony by the Delaware River to scatter his ashes. Notably, the ashes did not include his brain and eyes. The only public display of Einstein's brain can be seen at the Mutter Museum in Philadelphia. But how did this happen? Anna Doty, the curator of the museum and director of the Mutter Institute, explained that the Mutter Museum received a call in November 2011 from Dr. Lucy Rourke Adams, who offered one of Harvey's boxes of slides. She received the slides from another neuropathologist, who got it from a neuropathologist, who got it from Harvey. 
The Mutter Museum was asked to create an exhibit in a short period due to the excitement around the donated specimens. Since then, the slides have remained on display, making it the sole permanent exhibit of Einstein's brain worldwide. Harvey, who later had his medical license revoked due to failing an exam in 1988, believed that the sole understanding of neuroanatomy and cellular structure was sufficient to define genius. His ultimate claim was that Einstein's brain appeared different compared to others, suggesting it operated in a unique manner. Although some of these differences have been validated by other academics, none of them have truly unraveled Einstein's brilliant mind. The pathologist may have gained insight by reading the quote supposedly present on Einstein's office blackboard, not everything that counts can be counted, and not everything that can be counted counts. Additionally, Harvey also removed Einstein's eyeballs and entrusted them to Einstein's eye doctor, Henry Abrams, who reportedly stored them in a safe deposit box located in New York City. Thomas Harvey passed away on April 5, 2007, at Princeton's University Medical Center. Alfredo Satan, a professor at University of California, Los Angeles, stated on Quora that people have been saying about Einstein's brain having more glial cells, but it turns out that happens when you have fewer neurons. That totally goes against the idea that Einstein had more neurons. And most of those theories about his genius couldn't be proven. Sure, his right temporal lobe had an extra fold, but that's just something that randomly occurs sometimes. What really stood out was how ordinary the structure of his brain was. And what made Einstein's brain so special was all in his mind. What do you guys think? Feel free to share in the comments section below. If you enjoyed the video, a subscription would really make my day. Thanks, I appreciate it. See you in the next video and have a good day.